really that was the intention to sort of create a big picture map of all the wonderful work that is already going on in the world. And, and, and basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm creating a bit of a synthesis and, and weaving it all together because even within people working within sustainability or regenerative development, um, people get sort of their, their hobby horses, the, the area where they think this is the most important thing that needs changing. We need to change our monetary system. We need to change the way we make decisions or the, the social aspect or the ecological aspect or the economic aspect. And really, we need to change everything. We really need to. It's a, it's a profound transformation of the human presence on Earth. And, and all of it is important. And it doesn't mean that each one of us has to be involved in change initiatives in all areas. But we need to value only we'll only see that there's already already a massive movement of change happening on the planet once we start to value all the different dimensions of this transformation and and see how many we actually already are that are working on it mm -hmm. yeah and i and I think that your book in particular and and what you're doing is is good because it you're like you just said you're highlighting all of these different things that are currently happening i mean these these movements are already they're already there and i think that they're kind of invisible i mean and as someone and i'm calling from i'm calling from idaho in i in you know the united states so your message and your and, and the things that you're highlighting seem almost like a foreign alien concept not not just to me but to the people that i'm surrounded with they, it doesn't quite um, it hasn't quite sunk in, at least in my community, and, and I would say more broadly within the United States, it hasn't really sunk in that there is this massive crisis that is emerging on our planet that has been emerging, that is currently unfolding um, regarding uh, the unraveling of the biosphere, the unraveling of the life systems that exist that we that have been holding us like, you know, we wouldn't be able to exist without them, and yet we have become so disconnected from those systems and from our awareness of that, that, you know, as it unravels and as it begins to fall apart, we're not even going to be aware of it until, I mean, maybe uh, this is a bit pessimistic and I apologize, but, you know, we might not even be aware of how far we have really descended into this hellhole until it's a little too late. So I think that, I mean, I have to do, or you have to do whatever you can to try to highlight, you know, there is alternatives available there are ways that we can live that are you know I, I think oftentimes what i hear from people that are becoming aware of how destructive our uh, systems are our economic and social systems are on this planet they immediately look to other human beings and say um, human beings are are a curse and we're a cancer on this planet and we need to we we're, the planet would be better off without us mm -hmm. And I think I used to have that opinion as well. And then I became aware of your work and others' work that really highlighted the fact that, you know, it's not us, it's our culture. It's the um, it's the uh, the kind of operating systems in which we're operating under. And, and of course, what you highlight is like there are regenerative cultures that have existed and can exist. Um, so I guess if I could ask you my first question... Um, is oftentimes when people talk about environmental issues, um, they discuss it like uh, they say sustainability, right? Like we need to become more sustainable. We need to figure out how to recycle better. We need to figure out how to have and you know uh, provide energy for people that's more sustainable. Um, but what your the title of your book is designing regenerative cultures. So if you wouldn't mind, if you could explain the difference between the two, the difference between a sustainable culture and a regenerative culture. Um. It depends on how deep somebody's understanding of the term sustainability is. I, I don't really want to create another dualism or another kind of now the next trend is that everything has to be regenerative rather than sustainable. There are many really good people around the world mm -hmm. that have worked in the field of ecological design or sustainable design doing things that I would call are regenerative in, in approach. But to make a distinction, mm -hmm. um, you can think of it, and this is not really my framework, it's a framework that um, a friend of mine called Bill Reed um, developed and publicized, and a lot of other people were involved, uh, like Carol Sanford and, and the people from the Regenesis group. And basically, it, it 
paints a spectrum that starts with business as usual. And business as usual is um, one foot out of jail. You, you're staying within legal compliance of how much can I pollute, how much energy can I use, how much impact can I have on the environment without breaking the law. And you do that. And that's what most companies are doing. And then some companies say, well, we've kind of understood that there is a crisis, an environmental crisis, that that more and more consumers are getting aware of, and we want to not be seen as people that don't care about this, so we'll be a little bit better. So they then um, become green companies and, and pollute a little less and celebrate it and communicate it and often spend more time communicating it than actually making big changes, and that's what a lot of people refer to as greenwashing. But often it's actually a step in the right direction. It's trying to do a little less bad. And then eventually you get to sustainable, mm -hmm. which in one interpretation is saying we're not adding, adding any more damage to the system. We, like, we've created a business that um, doesn't have a negative impact. Um, and that's fantastic, and very few companies are actually at that point yet that they really could say of themselves, our company does have no negative impact on the planet whatsoever. Um, but really what Regenerative is, is proposing is to go beyond this neutral point and to really understand that since we've done so much damage to the environment and social systems and, and local economies for so long now, that we actually need to regenerate all these, these aspects of the global system that we're part of. And that um, so, so going in the same spectrum as you continue, you go from sustainable, um, which Bill McDonough calls 100% less bad or neutral, um, to restorative. But restorative needs to be done in a mindset that is uh, this kind of engineering mindset of the, the scientific and, and industrial revolution of we are the masters of nature and we can just design ecosystem and we can do big um, climate engineering projects to, to balance global warming and all that. And that still has the caveat that some of those solutions might look like they're adding new trees to the planet and are therefore good. But if they're not done with humility and respect of the system that we're part of, understanding that as culture we are actually part of nature, then they often make mistakes. And they tend to be grandiose re reforestation um, projects that sometimes end up 10 years later, um, most of the trees are dead. And, and so unless we really go upstream of all these pro problems that we're finding, like the environmental crisis is, is one expression of a whole confluence of different crises, uh, economic crises and, and, and um, cultural crises that really find their upstream source in a crisis of the story that we tell about who we are, why we're here, and what life is worth living for. And and this is what why a lot of people are depressed these days and you get all these these um drugs to help people with, with their depression, um, because people are stuck in a system where they work for money, but they don't get very much meaning out of what they're working for. They're just doing it to feed their family and that's important and people need to feed their families. But um the minute you create companies that really say we are doing something that is regenerating the planet that is that is giving back that is creating healthier ecosystems better that is strengthening local economies and local communities then people at the end of the day don't feel that they've just traded eight hours or so of their lifetime to have a few dollars to take home but they actually like i've done something today that was meaningful and i'm not saying that there are a lot of people firemen teachers nurses um so many people out there who, who do that every day. But overall, so many people are stuck in systems where they kind of go, okay, I, I sold a few more insurances. I, I did this, that, and the other. And, and they don't really see or I made more money for the people, um, my investors. Uh, and and it doesn't, doesn't really fully nourish their soul. So, yeah, regenerative is this, yeah. is this deeper understanding of sustainability that understands that um, mm -hmm. We are, as biological beings, we are part of nature first, and that culture is an epiphenomenon of the human species, and that cultures can either be degenerative, they can draw down their resource base, they can destroy ecosystems, they can live off planetary interest, uh, ba basically, or planetary capital, um, and, and erode that capital, or they can be, if you shift towards regenerative cultures, um, 
they try to regrow everything they use. They try to leave the planet ahead restore social cohesion in communities and regenerate loneliness by working in ways that are very carefully adapted to, and this is really the biotrill uniqueness of place. To understand that any solution we develop isn't a solution that we can use one size fits all around the whole globe and just spread. We need to carefully work with the ecological and social and cultural conditions of a place and make our solutions an expression that comes from that place. Only then will we get people really buy into it and, and be part of it. And, and it has to be work with the people in place, listening not just to the human stories, but also to the story of, of place, the, 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 the other species and, and what the land wants to happen.